Good morning everybody, welcome to day two of Wilbur's Arctic Adventures and that, behind all of that murk, is Holland. So today the plan is to go from Amsterdam, where we're going to dock, all the way to Cuxhaven in Germany, which is our camping for tonight. 520k or something I think it is, um, a couple of interesting points on the route we'll go through and um, let's hope we make it there. Join us! Well, the first job on the boat is a socially distanced breakfast, so that's some granola and UHT milk I bought. We can then get ourselves outside, and there we can see our first bit of land, that is mainland Europe, and the edge of the port of Eymuden. That's the uh, Dutch border, we've been through that, I couldn't get the camera working so there's no footage of that, but I don't think you're supposed to film it anyway. <laughs> and uh, found these three uh, reprobates from Glasgow on their Harleys, they're off, don't know, um, Clyde Valley Harley Owners Group, uh, they're off down to uh, Germany uh, and Austria, so wish them all the well on their trip. We had a beer last night, so that's it. Get the sat nav programmed and hit the road. All the best. All the best. All the best. You too, guys. Cheers. Nice <laughs> so, with that done, we get to enjoy our run through the roadworks at Imuden Harbour. And as you see, glorious surroundings here, fine architecture, the fine art displayed on the buildings there. Not exactly something to look forward to, I suppose. And we ride through over the rough cobbles and feed our way. Of course, we're on the wrong side of the road here. We're on the right hand side. And this brings us to our first obstacle a funny Dutch roundabout. And I've realised these roundabouts you have to give, well, the first thing is you go around them the wrong way. And the second thing is you've got to give way to everything pedestrians first, and then bikes on that red bit, and then finally the cars. And you go around the roundabout the wrong way, and if you've got all that right, and you remember where your exit is, you're off and away. That's it, onto the highway. Thankfully for today, it's a bit misty, but it was quite warm and humid, but the traffic's reasonably light, and we can head our way out towards the north, because we are going to be heading to a bit of a landmark. Rather than just blast east along the motorway, I thought we'd head north a bit and head over here. And that is the Afslau Dyke, which is a 32 kilometre dyke that was built, well it started in 1925 and it was finished in 1932. I was hoping for glorious sea views and to be able to run along the motorway here, but as you can see, it's a construction and traffic nightmare which wasn't really what I was hoping for with this detour. But, a few daft facts about this. So this dike, there was 5,000 people at a time working on this and 10,000 different people. There's 25 sluice gates and here's the first set. And this is the Stebbin Sluice. And this was named after Dutch mathematician and engineer Simon Stebbin. So if you had 1.3 billion cubic feet feet of material you could build your very own 30 kilometre dike. Well anyway, other bits about this. So the motorway runs along it. There was provision for a railway when they first built it but the railway never got built. There's some islands that run along here which are used during the construction process and they built out from the islands. And the other fact this was the 130 kilometre test zone for the motorway speed limits in Holland. But there was one person who actually took his Formula One car along here, with the permission, of course, and he did over 300 kilometres an hour just to see how fast he could go. That's pretty cool. About a third of the way along, there's a statue of Cornelius Ley, and that was unveiled by Queen Juliana in 1954, and he's the guy that designed this whole project. There's a lookout tower there, and that's about it. But after all the traffic and stuff, I didn't really feel like stopping, so I just motored on. So towards the end of the dike, there's a town called Zurich, and I didn't realize that. Yes, not the Zurich over in Switzerland. There's one in Holland as well. 
Anyway, we motored on, the traffic had eased off a bit so that was good, and we could get ourselves off the end of this dike and back heading east. Here's another one of those nice wooden bridges. It breaks up the journey a bit looking at the architecture of bridges, more interesting than concrete. Oh, and here's another one. They must have got a job lot of these in Holland. Wooden bridges everywhere. So it's 30 odd degrees, the traffic's not too bad and we can just amuse ourselves for the rest of the morning looking at the architecture as we head along the roads. Lunchtime, day two, and um, motorway service lunch. That's the way it goes. So we've made it just past Groningen. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, that was my aiming point for lunch. We're about 20k past that. So uh, we're doing okay, even though I went the wrong way this morning for about 20 miles. Um, anyway, we're sort of back on track. Um, it's just over two hours to the campsite tonight. So if I spend half an hour here, have a rest and then get going again. We should be there by 5 p.m., which is okay. Um, so, sit down, got a bench to myself, and uh, have some lunch. That's it, lunch stop done. We are 20 kilometers from the German border and 189 kilometers from the campsite. So if I get going, that's two and a quarter hours or so. So let's go. So we're coming up to the German border without knowing exactly what to expect. Let's just hope we go straight through. I didn't know whether they would have checkpoints for Covid or anything here. But anyway, with the barriers I wasn't sure. But no, it looks okay. If we can get underneath this green bridge and out the other side, that puts us in Germany. There's the old customs offices and stuff on the right hand side. And what have we got to greet us? Oh, roadworks. That's not good. I think the roadworks in Germany are about as bad as the roadworks in the UK. They just seem to go on forever. And the traffic's bad and you're pending with the concrete barriers. It's not fun, but we've got to grind out. Anyway, we were soon off that. And we got ourselves up into Cuxhaven. And we're going through the little country streets looking for the campsite. This is good. It's not too late in the day. It's nice and warm. And we'll be looking forward to getting to the camping tonight. Our first night in a tent, of course, because last night was in a ferry. Here we are, Camping Beckman, that'll do nicely. That's it, checked in. Let's go and find our camping spot, get set up and get out into town. Well, that's it, we're here. This is our camping spot. Get the tent up there, Wilbur's here. First thing I'm going to do is get a drink and get out of these bike clothes, get the camping set up and get into town and get a beer somewhere. 30 degrees, it's a bit warm.
sorted. 26 minutes start to finish, everything done. So it was a half hour walk into Cook's Harbour which was okay with the weather. Here's the main street. It was quite busy and here's the beach and a view down the promenade area with a one-man band playing and here's the beach. The beach goes on forever and they've got these funny yellow huts. I think they rent them out by the hour or something. But it was time to get to the restaurant. Time for a beer and that went down well. A delicious German pizza. That was good as well. I enjoyed that. And an ice cream to finish because it's rude not to. And here's another shot of one of the buildings in Cookshaven. And after that it was time to get back to site while we still had daylight. Spill a bit of oil on the floor and do all the maintenance checks. So gearbox oil here. Do the primary oil as well. Check the primary chain. Fill up the primary oil. Do the engine oil. Check spokes, tyres, things like that. And we're good. Well, here we are. First night in the tent. In my bed. It's probably too warm to be inside the sleeping bag, so I'll sleep on top of it. It's pretty quiet in the campsite, except for one family over there. But anyway, they're, I don't know, playing some board games or something. And, um, well, there we are. That was today. So, Wilbur, the primary chain's a bit tighter than I would like. The rear chain, uh, I'm not sure about that. And, um, obviously, he really didn't like running as hot as he did, which is why I backed the speed off. I was doing 90Ks earlier on, and I dropped it back to 85 later. Um, just, yeah, the, the heat. He gets very noisy when he's hot. Um, but he hasn't used any oil in the engine, at least. Um, he always uses oil in the primary and the gearbox, because neither of those have got any seals. Um, and the primary oil leaks out and uh, feeds the rear chain, actually. That's how it's designed, so you've got to keep topping that up. So we put about 100ml of oil into those. Um, and other than that, that's it. So not a bad first day. We got here before 6pm. We got tent set up. We got pizza and beer. Um, that's it. Tomorrow's a long day. We've got 560 kilometres to do. I'm not so looking forward to that because we've got to go across the Danish border as well. Uh, but anyway, all I can do is get on the bike early, get going and um, make up as much time as I can. At 80 kilometres an hour, that's seven hours riding, uh, which is pretty much what I did today. So I've just got to uh, do it and hope that the traffic's not as bad as it was today in places. So, that's it. We're on our way. We're closer to the Arctic Circle than we were yesterday. Uh, Wilbur's pretty good. I'm pretty good. So, join us next time and uh, see if we can get through Denmark. Cheers. So, join us next time in episode 3. And we ride through deserted German towns. Where is everybody? We take our second ferry crossing of the journey. It's a long way from being our last. We ride through some nicely lit, bright, clean tunnels, which later on we would have really appreciated. Yes, poor Wilbur and tunnels. We get to the Danish border after we've sat in a queue for a while. But when we get there, we get pulled over and there's a Covid quarantine tent just over on the right hand side. Oh dear, poor Wilbur. We meet our first nutter. He's certainly not the last though. We end up on some forest treks somewhere in the north of Denmark trying to find a campsite. And we get to sit on the beach and watch the sunset with a beer. A good way to round the day off. Join us next time on Wilbur's Arctic Adventure. <laughs>